Let's pay homage to the Buddha, the fully enlightened one. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa Before going to give Dhamma talk, I'm going to pay respect to the Buddha by reciting Bali stanza. Buddha Bodaya de 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 danto yo damataya sa. Damataya danto damante no vatranaya sa. Nibudo nibana taya dan lokatranami. Lokatreno lokatumma i kozaya ta supshato mudo. Yo nago buddha naga miro ya diya sende ya to ta chen ya swapya di. Buddha di sali in kuro rain to chen di mien do muvi pshe yue. Bodhaya sa juthai ta du bo bo lu ro ku tu ten lin ti cha pa si jin chu nga la gao. Dhanto ku ro ka bin yin chi ro mu vi pshe yue. Dhammataya sa juthai ta du bo bo lu ro ku tu me yin yin chi cha si chin nga la gao. Tanto kuraingga bin kile ta upu kate e nyein do mu vi pshe yue. Tamba ta ya sa chutai ta du bo bo lu ro kutu me yuen kile ta pu nyein ja ba si chen nga la gao. Te no va tante ya na vang gara chango. Kutan to chao kuro dan yao pi pshi yue ta le yin. Dara na ya sa kuro tatu chotai tu ro ne bu ta wan ma be kando. Kutan to chao yao cha ba zi jin chu nga la gao. Ne bu to ki li ta pre ne ba wen san yo te. Kuro dan e nyein do mu vi pshe yue. Ne ba na ta ya sa kuro ta tu we ne lu ro pu ka te nyein ja ba zi jin chu nga la gao. Dhamam ni zin li na dhamma sa ko. Di 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 guru na shi ta mye ta pshe. Ho cha ro mu khe ba bi yi. Loka dara na loka tung ba yi ko za ya ta su pshe to mu do. Dan na ga mbo da na ga mi ro ya di a se in di a to ta tu mya swa pya gu. Na mi na ma mi gu no na long tung zong pyang pyo. Mangu sho yue ga do mya nu le sung mu yue. Shiko u nyo pa yi mya swa pya, mya swa pya. So, now all of you are going to take a precept. 
So please repeat after me. Aham bandi Ti sarani na saha Atanga samanakatam Upo sata silam Dhammam ya chami Anugaham gatawa Silam dita Me bandi Duti yampi Aham bandi Ti sarani na saha Atanga samanakatam Upo sata silam Dhammam ya chami Anugaham katawa Silam dita Me bandi Tati yampi Aham bandi Ti sarani na saha Atanga samanakatam Upo sata silam Dhammam ya chami Anugaham gatawa Silam dita Me bandi Ya maham vada mi tam vadita Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambudassa Uttam saranam gachami Dhammam saranam gachami Sangham saranam gachami Duti ampi buddham saranam gachami Duti ampi dhammam saranam gachami Duti ampi sangham saranam gachami Tati ampi buddham saranam gachami Tati ampi dhammam saranam gachami Tati ampi dhammam saranam gachami Tati ampi sangham saranam gachami Tati ampi sangham saranam gachami Ti sarana kamanam pripunam Panati pata, Panati pata, Viramani, 
Sikabadam Samadhiyami Adhina Dana Viramani Sikabadam Samadhiyami Abrahmacharya Viramani Sikabadam Samadhiyami Musavada Viramani Sikabadam Samadhiyami Suramiraya Majabamadatana Viramani Sikabadam Samadhiyami Vikala Bhojana Viramani Sikabadam Samadhiyami Natcha Gita Vadita Visuka Dasana Malaganda Vilipana Dharana Nandana Vibhusanathana Viramani Sikabadam Samadhiyami Uchasayana Mahasayana Viramani Sikabadam Samadhiyami Idam Ibonyam Idam Isilam Nibbanasa Pachayo Hotu Tisarani Nasaha Atanga Samanakatam Upo Satasilam Dhammam Sadukam Katawa Appamadina Sambadita So today, on the opening day of the short-term retreat, I'm going to explain how to practice according to the teachings of the Buddha. Before explaining the way how to practice meditation, I want to ask you a question. Why do you want to practice meditation? 
brother, brother Jung, James and brother James, why do you want to practice meditation? Or have you ever practiced meditation in your life? This is another question followed by. Very seldom. Very seldom. So what is your purpose of practicing meditation? You can, you can tell me the way you understand. You don't need to hesitate. To have a better life. And this is your expectation of practicing meditation. Younger brother? What do you understand? Reduce defilements. This is your purpose of practicing meditation, to reduce your defilements. Okay. What is... Brother? I want to become more calm and focused in life. And want, to, want to concentrate. You want concentrated mind through practicing meditation. So now ladies turn. A lady with class? Yes, you. To reduce suffering. Do you want to really reduce suffering? Do you know what is suffering? This is question. A lot of problem in life. So you want to reduce those suffering that you encounter in your life. Yes. Another nearby. To train the mind. Yes, good. Brother, sis, sister? You? Yes. Another? You also can. You want to enlighten through practicing meditation. Okay, good. So, now you see, individual purpose of practicing meditations are not the same. And if I want all of you understand, what is the purpose of practicing meditation? The purpose of practicing meditation is to know and to see the truth, the Dharma, as he really are. Whoever would like to reduce suffering, they all need to know the Dharma, the truth, as he really are. The day you know the truth as he really are, the day you have reduced your suffering, it means the cause of suffering. So those who want to make the mind calm, they need to know the truth. Only when they know and they see the truth, their mind becomes calmer because they have developed new vision, what they have never in their life. So new vision need to be developed. So now all of you have just old vision, no new vision. So the vision that you, sh you should all need to develop is knowing and seeing the truth as they really are. So those who want to know, who want to see the truth as they really are, they need to develop concentration. So the purpose of practicing meditation is to know and to see the truth as they really are. 
All the people in the world, they have a lot of confusion and doubt. Because of confusion and doubt, they suffer. Whoever has confusion, whoever has doubt, they suffer. Without knowing and seeing the truth as they really are, nobody can remove their confusion. Nobody can remove their doubt. For that reason, for whoever would like to live peacefully, happily, with comfort, without confusion, without any doubt about the truth, they all need to practice meditation. How did the Buddha appear in the world after realizing the truth, the Dharma, as they really are? How did we enlighten? How did the Buddha enlighten? How did the wise in times of the Buddha enlighten? Because of knowing and seeing the truth as they really are. So without knowing, without seeing the truth as they really are, nobody can expect to enlighten. Nobody can reduce suffering. Nobody can live peacefully. Nobody can remove confusion and doubt. The only way to overcome all the problems we encounter in life is to know and to see the Dharma, the truth as they really are. This is the only way to solve the problem that we humans encounter. Not only humans, but also all the beings in the world, unseen beings and seen beings, intelligent beings and intelligent beings. All they are encountering difficulty in life. All they are suffering because of not knowing, because of not seeing the Dharma, the truth as they really are. So everybody has ambitions in life. Everybody has their own goal to reach. But nothing, there is no any goal that is important then. The goal of knowing and seeing the truth as they really are. So if you all want to really help oneself, you all need to practice meditation. Not in a way of tradition, but in a way of serious manner. Now, how many, how many days retreat? Not three days. Half days, I think. <laughs> okay, so we, we, we will count three days retreat. I come and introduce all of you how to practice meditation. It is a way of introducing all of you how to help yourself. There is no any other worldly education really can help you. It is just to survive in your life. We educate, you educate to make our living. But this is not the way to overcome the suffering that we encounter in life. So suffering arises in the form in many forms. Anyway, all the, all the form of, all different types of suffering can be overcome, can be solved. When you know, when you see the truth as they really are. So this is the only way to overcome all the problems we encounter in life. So I will repeat it. The purpose of practicing meditation is to know and to see the Dharma, the truth as they really are. Do you know what is the truth? Have you ever learned that truth? Is there any university from where you can learn this truth? There is no any institute. There is no any university from where you can learn. This is through training your mind. 
This is through practicing meditation. Engaging, practicing meditation, spending enough time. When you know, when you see the truth, with the successful training of your mind, you will know, you will see the truth. If it is so, to know and to see the truth, what do we need to do? Attending schools, attending university, you cannot know. How much you read, you cannot know. How much you listen to the Dharma, you cannot know. Nowadays, there is no one who can enlighten just by hearing the Dharma. This is the age in which we all need to practice systematically step by step. Only then you can expect to know and to see the truth as they really are. The truth is beyond reasoning. Just by reasoning, you can't. Just by reading, you can't. Just by hearing, you can't. Just by listening, you can't. You need to train your mind. I repeat, what do we need to do to know and to see the truth as they really are? Buddha said, Samadhi bhikkhu bhavita samayito bhikkhu bhikkhu yata buddha pachanati bhikkhu. Develop concentration. The one who is concentrated knows and sees the truth, the Dharma, as he really are. This is the point. Whoever would like to know, whoever would like to see the Dharma, the truth, as they really are, they all need to develop concentration. This is a key to open the door to know and to see the truth. So why do we need to develop concentration? Without concentration, is there anything that can help us to know and to see the truth? I say no. There is nothing which can help you to see the truth without having developed concentration. Now I will give an example. On the floor on which you are sitting, they make clean. Anyway, if I say there are a lot of small bacteria on it, on, on it do you agree with me? But do you see them? You don't see them, but you have knowledge. It's under the microscope you can see them. Things that you can't see with your naked eyes, you can't deny that there is no. There is something or there is a, an instrument which is powerful instrument that can help you to see even though you can't see with your naked eyes. So when scientists could invent a microscope which can enlarge 500 times, they could start seeing micro, small bacteria since at that time. But even though these all-powerful microscopes and all the instruments can't help you to see the truth, it is beyond the reach of those instruments. Only you are responsible for your knowing, for your seeing the truth as they really are. What is your responsible? What is your responsible? Your responsible is to develop concentration. If you develop concentration, concentrated mind produces very powerful light. Now, is this room bright? 
Right? Okay. Is this light very strong? Strong enough for all of you to see each of them, each of you. But it cannot help you to see the truth as they really are. If you close your eyes, you see this light. It becomes dark, right? Whether you are in the dark room, whether you are in, under the sunlight, if you close your eyes, you are totally dark. Because you are, you all are soundly sleeping in the darkness. Do you mean, do you know what I meant? You, are, you all are soundly sleeping in the darkness of ignorance. Even though there is daylight, even though there is the light made by humans, but you all are in the dark, soundly sleeping in the darkness of the ignorance because of not knowing, because of not seeing the truth. Only when you develop concentration with open, with closed eyes, even in the dark room, it becomes very bright. You see brightness with closed eyes. That light of concentration is much, much stronger than, powerful than microscope. You can see your inner parts of the body with the help of that light of concentration. You can see those, you can see inner parts of those who are sitting nearby. Not only nearby, those who are far, and also the whole Singapore, and also the whole world too. Do you want to experience? If you want, you need to develop concentration. You need to follow practice the way the Buddha taught. The way leading to know and see the Dharma, the truth as they really are, appear in the world with the arising of the Buddha. Here you all need to be careful. There are many meditation methods teaching in the world. Even in Singapore, there are many ways, I think. Okay? You all need to be careful Many ways of practicing meditation that has been taught nowadays are not according to the Buddha. So you all need to know the way the Buddha taught precisely. Only then you can expect to know and to see the Dharma as he really are. But if your purpose of practicing meditation is just to make your mind calm, just to make you feel happy, just to feel comfort, you can practice any method that you see in this world. But if you want to know, if you want to see the Dharma, the truth as they really are, you can't practice all of them. You need to follow the only way taught by the Buddha, not any other ways. So my purpose of coming here today is to share all of you with the true teachings of the Buddha. I will not follow any traditions of the teachers. I will follow our teacher who is a Buddha. Do you want to follow the Buddha? Great. I will share with all of you. So first of all, you all need to develop concentration. If it is so, you all need to know how many meditation objects are Buddha taught for the development of concentration? This is first what you all need to know precisely. The Buddha taught altogether 40 kinds of meditation objects. We are teaching to our disciples almost all these 40 kinds of meditation objects. If you find the opportunity, to practice one day, maybe I may be able to teach you. 
Are you going to find an opportunity? There are some I see, those who are my old disciples, they are going to practice under my guidance. Okay? So newcomers, maybe they will become those who would like to engage practicing sooner or later. But anyway, you all should seriously consider about how to help yourself. Now all of you haven't helped yourself really. You're making your living. Maybe you make un a lot of money, but nothing. All these are just for your suffering if you don't know how to make use of them. For that reason, all of you need to treat on a new path what you are not very much familiar in this very life. But you may be familiar in the past. Whether you have done, whether you have walked on this path in your past life can be known through practicing meditation. Even one day, you can know, you can see your past life. When you know, when you see your past life, you can check, you can discern whether you have practiced this meditation in your past. Now you are not familiar because you are very busy with pursuing after sensuality. But in your past life, you may have done so. All these can be known through practicing meditation. So now, we are going to explain how to develop concentration. So among 40, one is mindfulness of breathing meditation. So we teach all the beginners mindfulness of breathing meditation, anapana, sati meditation. There are two reasons. One is because the Buddha, because of the Buddha. So all the Buddha, they practice Anapana meditation as a foundation for their enlightenment. This is really great meditation object. All the Bodhisattva, they practice Anapana meditation as a foundation for their full enlightenment. After they became full enlightened Buddha. They praised Anapana very much. This is a reason why I would like to teach all of you. So another reason, this is my reason. Do you want to, do you want to hear my reason? Or if you like, you can take. If you don't like, you don't need to take. So what is my reason? So since we were born, we are breathing. How do we breathe? Are we breathing naturally or unnaturally since we were born? Unnaturally. So this is one question. Another question. Are we breathing mindfully? Sorry? Are we breathing naturally or unnaturally? Naturally. Okay? Second question, are we breathing mindfully or unmindfully? You know, you are breathing unmindfully. You are unmindful being since you were born up to now. Do you agree with me? Now, we will combine these two. Since we were born, we are breathing naturally and unmindfully. This is the way of breathing, to live. If I say so, do you agree with me? We breathe naturally, unmindfully. This is the way of breathing to live. True? So another way, if I say, do you agree with me? This is the way of breathing, to die. True? Yes, one day you die. 
So, no much value. You are breathing naturally, unmindfully, just to live and to die. Now you are going to practice Anampana meditation. Don't think meditation is something special. Now I will not make anybody to be the one who is going to do something special. But I want all of you to improve only one thing in life. What you have done since you were born up to now. You are breathing naturally and mindfully. Now you need to improve only one naturally and unmindfully too. Naturally and mindfully. If you breathe like this, it is a way not to die. Good? Do you want to die or don't you want to die? Not to die, what does it mean? Also, you don't understand now. <laughs> Maybe you may be happy. If I don't die, it will be good. I see, if you don't die, it is so suffering. But what does it mean, deathless? Maybe you may know someday, one day, or if I get, or if I have opportunity to guide you to know what is deathless, I will be very happy. Okay? So this is the purpose of practicing meditation, to experience deathless. So now, if you breathe naturally and mindfully, this is a way not to die. How not to die will be understood. One day, if you engage practicing systematically according to the teachings of the Buddha. So for that reason, now keep in mind, you are going to breathe naturally as you have done in your whole life. But unmindfully too, mindfully. So it becomes very great if you can change only one thing. So another thing, another reason. Anapana meditation is not like any other, most of the meditation objects. All the other meditation objects, almost all, they are not with all of you. You need, you need, you need to make them appear first. You need to make them appear first to practice them. But Anapana is with all of you since you were young, you were born. So which is better? Which is with you and which is not with you? So you don't need to make it appear. It is with you. That's why I choose this meditation object to teach all the beginners. So now, you all know what is the reason why I taught all the meditators, all the beginners, Anapana meditation. One is because the Buddha praised very much. Another, because all the Bodhisattva practice Anapana as a foundation for their full enlightenment. So another two reasons is my reason, because we are breathing since we were born. It is with us. If it is so now, it's a time to explain to all of you how to practice Anapana meditation systematically the way taught by the Buddha. Keep in mind, the purpose of practicing meditation is to know and to see the Dharma, the truth as they really are. Keep in mind the words of the Buddha, the one who is concentrated knows and sees the Dharma, the truth as they really are. If it is so, if we say in opposite, the one who is not concentrated will not know, will not see the Dharma, the truth as they really are. So if you want to practice meditation, always follow practice the way the Buddha taught. If any teachers taught, if you know that it is not according to the Buddhas, please don't follow. If I teach all of you not the way taught by the Buddha, please don't follow. Useless. Okay? So you all need to be the one who follow practice the teachings of the Buddha. Because the way leading to make an end of suffering, 
the way to make free from all suffering appear in the world because of the Buddha. No one can teach this way. We can teach because we follow the words of the Buddha. If you don't follow teaching the words of the Buddha, useless. I'm not a good friend for all of you. I will be the one who destroy all of you. Okay? So for that reason, now I will teach you how to practice Anapana meditation. First of all, how to sit. So you should sit on the cushion. Now, they make the floor to be big cushion. I need two cushion, but they have only one cushion. But they make floor to be big cushion. So small one is with all of you now. Okay, it is good. So if you practice in other place, or if you practice at home, or if you practice wherever you are, you should arrange two cushions. One is big, another small. Big one, or big one is what is good enough, what is big enough, maybe you can adjust it. For sitting, another small one, that two types. One is the high, the same high. Now the one that you are using is the cushion, first type of cushion which has the same size, the same high. So what I prefer, according to my experiences, a little bit slope one. The back a little bit high, the front a little bit low. The slope one. This is the best. But anyway, now, please satisfy with what you have. <laughs> you can't complain then. <laughs> okay, so, sit on it. And sit, simple posture. Full lotus, half lotus is not recommended. You may see the Buddha statue. Sit, full lotus. Please don't emulate, you can't do. If you practice that, that way, you cannot develop concentration. Look good, but you torture yourself. Okay? In some country, they are instructed to practice that way. But if they want to know and see the Dharma as they really are, if they want to develop concentration as they really if they want to develop concentration deeply, they should not use this posture. So you should Choose simple posture, keeping one is back, one is front. Do you get what I mean? Okay. So without pressing each other, please don't sit half lotus, please don't sit full lotus. It will not be good for long term practice. And then sitting in that posture, so keep your hand on your lap. Keep your hand on your lap and keep your body and head straight. And then relax your body and mind. Relax your body and mind and when you feel relaxed, be aware of the breath around your nostril. Some it is clear somewhere around the nostril. Some it is clear Somewhere on the upper lip. So anyway, after making your body and mind calm, be aware of the breath around the nostril. You will see the breath somewhere touching. So when you breathe in, when you breathe out, it touches somewhere. So wherever you feel the breath, Somewhere around the nostril, you should focus on the breath there. Your object is breath, not the touch. When you practice Anapana meditation, be careful not to focus on the touch, but to focus on the breath where it is touching. Without the touch, we can't feel the breath. Without the touch, we can't feel the breath. 
If we feel the breath, it means it is touching. If you feel the breath somewhere, it means it is touching there. So you don't need to find the touch. You need to focus on the breath there. This is the point. This is very important. Many Anapana practitioners, they encounter big problem with Anapana because they emphasize focusing on the touch rather than the breath. Because of this reason, they, f they fed tension, they fed hardness, they fed many dukkha, they encounter many dukkha. So all of you need to focus on the breath from where it is touching. So to make all of you understand firmly, I will repeat, when we breathe in, when we breathe out, it touches somewhere around the nostril or on the upper lip. If you feel the breath somewhere around the nostril or on the upper lip, it means that it is touching there. So if you feel the breath, it is touching. If there is no touch, you can't feel. If you feel, it means it is touching. That's why you don't need to find the touch. Focus on the breath. Noting in when you breathe in. Noting out when you breathe out. Do you need to breathe strongly? I have told all of you, since we were born, we are breathing naturally and mindfully. Now, you are going to practice meditation just by improving one thing unnaturally and, sorry, naturally and unmindfully to naturally and mindfully. There is no any explanation that I have made for all of you to breathe purposely. Let breathe naturally as it is and focus on the breath mindfully. So noting in when you, uh, note in when you breathe in, note out when you breathe out. Do you get what I mean? Okay, so when you are practicing anapana meditation, wandering thoughts will arise. When wandering thoughts arise, you should not pay attention to wandering thoughts. You should not follow wandering thoughts too. You should ignore any thoughts, any memory, any objects, except inhaling and exhaling. So, how can we develop concentration? Who can develop concentration? And what is concentration? So concentration means one-pointed mind on one object. Whoever can develop one-pointed mind on one object continuously for a long time, they develop concentration. For that reason, you all need to train your mind to develop one-pointed mind on one object. If it is so, if wandering thoughts are, arise, if you pay attention to wandering thoughts, can you develop one-pointed mind? Cannot. Okay? For that reason, in practical sense, whenever wandering thoughts arise, you should ignore, just to bring your mind back on the meditation object as quick as possible. So this is the way you all need to train whenever there is wandering thoughts. So 
after 20 or 30 minutes, you may feel pain or you may feel numb, either left or right side of your knee. So at the beginning, it is a little bit. At the time, you don't need to worry. So when you feel pain, when you feel numb, please don't pay attention on it. At the beginning, it is a little bit. Ignore just by focusing on the breath. So if you can focus well, the pain will reduce. If you can focus well, continuously, longer time, the pain will disappear. But if you can't focus well, continuously, longer time, the pain becomes strong. If it is strong, it will disturb your natural focusing. If it disturbs your natural focusing, you need to change your sitting posture. So how to change? How to change? So you sit like this. You sit like this. So when you need to change, just change like this. Okay? So if you change that way, you will feel better. Can you see me? You can't see. Or in there, can see. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> so, I will show you. You should, you sit like this and you chain like this. From back to front. Okay? Or you can change any other posture you think it is suitable for you. But first, you should change this way. This is not a big change. That's why you should do this way, this one first. So change slowly, mindfully, focusing on the breath. And when you do walking, standing, sitting, lying, in every four postures, you all need to maintain focusing just on the breath. The reason is to develop one-pointed mind. Don't pay attention to any bodily action. This is not the way taught by the Buddha. This is the way taught by the teachers of nowadays. This is teacher's traditions. You don't need to do that one. So in every four postures, just focus on the breath as much as you can. The purpose is to develop one-pointed mind on one object. But here, all of you need to understand our mind doesn't delight staying with one object. This is the nature of our mind. Now you are going to develop one-pointed mind on one object. So this is completely against our habit, your habit. So the mind that can't stay with one object is untrained mind. Buddha said, I see no other single thing which is unbeneficial as untrained mind. Untrained mind is really unbeneficial. That's why you all need a strong wish to train your mind to be trained mind. The, train, the trained minds mean the mind that can do or can take the object that should be with. Now you are going to do that thing. The mind that doesn't want to be with one object, 
you train it to be the mind that can stay with one object. But at the beginning, everybody will encounter difficulty. Anyway, whenever wandering thoughts arise in you, please don't follow, bring your mind back on the meditation object as quick as possible. And whenever you have pain, whenever you feel pain at the beginning, it is a little bit, at that time, don't worry and don't pay attention on the pain. Just focus on the breath as usual, ignoring the pain. If you can focus well, the pain will reduce. If you can focus well longer time, the pain will disappear. But if you can't focus well continuously longer time, it will become stronger. If it is strong, it will disturb your natural focusing. The main thing is to focus on the breath. If the pain that, that is strong disturb, disturbs your natural focusing, you need to change your sitting posture. The so Buddha never taught to pay attention on the pain. Okay? Better Buddha never taught, Buddha never instructed to pay attention on the pain. This is the way we have practiced. This is the way many of you have practiced too so. But this is what we all need to avoid. Okay? So in every four postures, be mindful on the breath as much as you can. So, now, I think it is good enough for all of you how to practice Anapana meditation. So, now, is there anybody who would like to ask question which you are not clear with Anapana meditation. No questions? So if it is so, now you can continue, right? What is their me time? Okay, good. So if it is so, you have time to practice meditation. 